thanksgiving for the blessed sake, Father God. We thank you for the viewers that are online. Glory be to God. We thank you for the ones who are here. Glory be to God. We just bless you, Father. We just love on you this morning. For you are love. Glory be to God. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord, hallelujah, for his love endures forever. Yes. Father, we thank you for keeping us, for keeping us, bringing us together again this day, Father God. We thank you for covering us and protecting us with the blood of the Lamb, yes. the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What an awesome, awesome, awesome Father you are. You are love, Father. Hallelujah. We trust in you. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Trust him. For he is good. And he is good at all times. So we trust you. We trust in your faithfulness because you are faithful, Father. You are loving, Father. You are kind, Father. You are compassionate, Father. You are an understanding, Father. Oh, bless your holy name. So we thank you, Father. We come together in the name of Jesus. We come to give you the praise. We come to give you all thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And to rejoice in you, in your goodness, in Jesus' name. Let us welcome. Word Alive Christian Center Praise and Worship Team where we come together to praise you in Jesus' name.
were uh, ministering those, those words this morning. So I just want to give you a text. I mean, I, I, I shared it before, but I just really feel like, you know, it's really good in this moment to share it again. And this is the story of Lazarus, when Jesus Christ rose Lazarus from the dead. And I want you to catch this now, because it says, late in the midnight hour, he's going to turn it around. What is the midnight hour? Midnight hour represents when, when anything in the natural can't be, in other words, there's nothing in the natural that says it can work. Midnight hour represents when everything else has failed, we still got God's word to stand on. Yeah. Lord, Lord. That's what late in the midnight hour is. His word can still turn it around. Yeah. Yeah. And see, what happens is when you make your declaration, I'm going to see a victory. That, that is your time to basically make your declaration in the midst of the when the darkest hour, you get basically declared that God is still sits on the throne, and I'm going to say what God said about my situation. Yeah. So this is what happened. Lazarus died. Well, Lazarus was, was dying. The people went to see Jesus. By the time they got to Jesus, Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was already dead. You know what Jesus said in the middle of all of that? This sickness is not unto death, but that God may be glorified. Amen. I don't know if you heard what I just said. Lazarus was dead. Jesus didn't say, oh, well, I'll come and, and, and help him bury him. He, he said, in the midst of the midnight hour, this sickness is not unto death. In other words, he said, you all are going to see a victory in this situation. Glory. And then he waited two more days. So in other words, he got there two days later, which means he was dead for four days. You know why? Because they, in the Jewish culture, they believe that if you're, if you're dead for three days, the spirit is still hovering around the body. But the fourth day, they say the body, the, the spirit is definitely gone. So basically saying, there ain't no way he can come back. So in other words, God, you know what he said? Only God is going to get the glory from this. Yeah. Amen. And I love this. And he said, when he got there, this is what he said. He said, if you believe on me, he said, watch me do the work. And so I'm telling you, and then he said, take away the stone. You know what that means? Keep declaring, keep believing, keep standing on what God said about because God is going to do something great in your life. Amen. And so what I want to tell you is this morning is understanding that this is a prophetic saying that no matter what you're going through in your darkest hour, Jesus said, I am still king over every situation. I don't matter what you're going through, what's, what, what's happening in your life. If you keep speaking the word, he said his word can do. Because if his word can get Lazarus up after four days, surely his word can get you out of your situation. And so I don't know about you, but I'm truly fired up over the word spoken this morning. Because I know I'm going to see a victory. I don't know about you, but I'm going to see a victory. Because yeah. what the enemy did for evil, God's going to turn it for good. I don't know about you, he's going to turn it around. I don't know if I got anybody witnessing the house. He's going to turn my family around. He's going to turn my family around. He's going to turn my body around. He's going to turn it around. Even though I don't see it, I know he's working. Even though he was dead before me, I know God's working. Now I'm saying, I don't know why you waited so long to do this here. Because he's going to turn it around. 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 Amen. And I want you to understand, because you can that make sense to you, I want you to know that God is still working. What am I telling you? Don't quit saying you're going to see the victory. Don't agree with the enemy. Agree with what God said about your situation. Why? Because God is turning around. He is working behind the scenes. Even though you don't understand it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, I'm going to turn. I'm going to see it turn. I'm going to see a victory. Yeah. I know God's going to turn it around. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah. I believe that today. Yeah. Because you know what? I believe that my God's a big God. Amen. I believe he's just on the throne. Yeah. I believe he has no enemies. Yeah. I believe he's the great high young. I believe he's El El Young, the most high God. I serve a God like that. So if I serve a God that's just what I'm saying, if God before you, who could be against you? Oh, he said, if you declare a thing, I'll make it so that it happens in heaven on earth. So that's why I'll, I'll declare right now. I will see a victory in this situation. Yeah. The devil will not have the last thing so in my situation. Why? Because my God is great. Yeah. It's great to yeah. be great. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just praise and honor and worship you this morning for you are the great idea. Father, whatever people are dealing with, whatever challenge they're facing, Father, I just Pray that the joy of the Lord impacts their mind and their thinking when they begin to see that there is a tomorrow behind, behind what they're seeing. 
Lord. And that we believe that they're weeping, making dope for night, but joy comes yes, in the morning. Thank you, Lord God. And we just thank you. New day is going to start in good times. New day is starting in dark times. It is and so we just thank you for going to some Father, helping me see that there is a victory on the other side of what I'm going through. So I'm going to declare right now let your weak say, don't destroy. Let the force say, don't so right now, Father, in the midst of my situation, that I know that we have the victory over this situation, and I know that you are on the throne and working it all yes, out for my yes, yes. So I'm going to say like the word says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are alive, we're 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 alive, we are alive 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 we so uh, the second thing I want to um, share with you is, and then <clears throat> and then we'll have a couple of us, and then we'll get into ties and offering. Is the the second thing I have for you today is um, Dr. Powell's birthday. So I wanted to uh, say give give him a big shout out for his birthday today. He's our he's our founder, but also um, you know, so I think he's sixty today. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, sixty. And so the, the thing is, is that he went through a lot of battles. And so, you know, a couple of years ago, he was really, you know, in a fight for his life. I mean, I think his aorta a had, uh, had a hole in it. And they said that, you know, like, that's some chance most people don't make it out of those. So we understand that that's a victory right there, that, that he that he's still here. Amen. And that God Amen. still has a plan for him and things that he needs to do. Mm -hmm. So I just want for those who know him and have been really impacted by his ministry and all that, please, you know, just you know, uh, send him a shout out because you know he's on Facebook. Like you know, I'm not on Facebook, like, but he on Facebook all the time. You know, he'll let you know where he at. You know, say I'm just getting out the bathroom. It's nine o'clock in the morning. You know, he, he, he let you know what he doing all the time. Uh, I'm just messing around, but yeah, he let you know what's going on. Who's that? Oh, your birthday today, sir. <laughs> Oh, that's why you're here a little brain today. <laughs> I wonder what that was. I didn't understand what was going on. Really Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, yeah, so two James. Yeah. Yeah, James and James. <laughs> oh, man. So, so yeah, and, and then also I would say, you know, we you know we don't normally for families that we do a fish often, but if you want to be a blessing to them, I would say always, you know, do something to do it. Okay, if you want to be a blessing and, and uh, plant a seed in his life, all of that good stuff. So just want to, you know, give a shout out to him because, again, it's a blessing for him to see. So he's just seeing so many battles and all those type of things. So just want to just uh, give that shout out to him. So um, and, and with that being said, I want us to I want to talk a little bit. We want to move into uh, Tiles and Orphans, but I want to share the, from the from the, uh, the thread of outreach today. And we'll talk about the thread of outreach today because, again, that's why we want to, you know, plant our seeds in the kingdom of God and different things. We want to use our resources so we can really be a blessing to others. And so um, I was thinking about it this morning. And so I want to just really talk about how God has called us to make a difference in this region. Remember last week I was sharing about our fingerprints are so different. They say this is different by one percent. And so, for example, if you put your handprint in something, nobody else can duplicate it. Why? What does that represent? That means that God has called you to make an impact that nobody else can make. Come on. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that. And they said in every fingerprint is and they said by doctor, they did a study that they're off by like one percent. So the with the with the minister was sharing was that he just took it as a as God's way of saying that we're called to to, to reach at least one percent of the world. So in other words, in your atmosphere, your call. So for example, in this region, I think a couple years ago, maybe like four or five years ago, I did a number on this region. They say like 1% of this area be like, you know, 20,000 people, something like that. Like it's like a little over a million people in the DMV altogether. 
So like 1% of that be like 10,000, you know, plus whatever. So which means that we're called to reach, you know, so I would say somewhere around there, give or take. I'm not trying to put God in the box. I'm just, you know, just throwing out some numbers here. So which means that we got a lot of work to do. So meaning that if we don't go, since you have to realize when, like even in your own atmosphere, like for you, there are people, when you were designed, there were people God built you to help. And nobody else can reach them but you. So, in other words, the responsibility is on us. So, if they're not reached, it's because we didn't do what God called us to do. Come on. I follow him saying. And so, one thing I wanted to realize in, in, or catch this is that one thing that I was thinking about was that he said he has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And so, for me, because you, because in everything you do, you always have to know why you do something. Because your why is your drive for the what you do. So in other words, if if you can't stay with the what, because what sometimes can get mundane, it can be hard, it can be tough. It, you know what I mean? Just the what to do every day. You know what I mean? Just the the planning and the getting out and the you know. But if you know your why, it makes it all well worth it. And so my my thing is, I want you to realize this. Now me, which I believe in the scriptures. There is a heaven and hell. So in other words, we are called to help make sure that people that uh, spiritual destination is with the Lord, not apart from the Lord. And I just thank God that there were people who prayed for me. Who were when it opened the door for God to come down to Atlanta and reach me. And I'm saying that we have to understand there are people under the hand of the enemy that we're called to reach. And we have, and it says in the kingdom of God, so but the battle must take it by force. So now let me let me get put put context to this and just really bring bring this all home. And that that was for me, that's a great speech. But let me tell you something: the devils are not going to stand on the sidewalk and just clap as you just do what the Lord wants you to do. They are going to fight you every two for day. They're not going to sit there and be like, "Yeah, you want to reach the Lord? Go ahead." <laughs> They're going to fight you. And they fight you in so many different ways. They will bring, sometimes they will fight you through internal. So in other words, the way he, one of the best ways he beats the church is through internal division. So in other words, if he can create miscommunication and division amongst us, then we can't fulfill what God called us to do. Because we're divided amongst ourselves. So you have to understand that that's why honor has to be strong in the in the local church, not to basically, you know, about brown those. In other words, it's so that it can create an atmosphere where God can have a spirit of unity where he can get his plans and purposes fulfilled. How y'all follow what I'm saying? Because when you're in a room or a, in a place of of, uh, of division and, and uh, misunderstanding, the enemy can use that. And so now we can't be affected because we are divided amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. I y'all follow what I'm saying? Amen. So, and, and understand that now God has called us to go into the enemy's territory and begin to, with the authority of the word, to pull people out of the kingdom of darkness. So I just want you to let you know that um, church isn't about, uh, and again, it's great to have great services, great praise and worship, great facilities, and those things are needed. But let me tell you something. Some people are fighting for their mental health. Amen. Some people fighting for their marriage, they're fighting for their sanity, they're fighting for their life. And so, in other words, yes, we can uh, go after nice facilities, but I'd rather let's go after, you know, setting people free from the hand of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and in that way, and as we do that, I believe God is going to open the door for our building and all the things that we need. Why? Because we made it about his business. Now he's going to give us what we need to further his name. Amen. And let me tell you something. I, I listen to a lot of country boys. I'm trying to tell you. These country guys, they're something else. You know what they say? They say, they, they, they say you know, lights came. That's great. But they say they, they wouldn't mind being in the back of a barn where the cows are moving. And hey, if God is there. Mm, amen. I follow what I'm saying. So I'm saying is that people want to go where they know where God is. And where freedom is, and where change is going to happen, where their hearts are being restored. I mean, it's, yeah, and, for, and let me tell you, and, 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 uh, 
Whew, I tell you, I'm, I'm trying to be careful how I say it, but sometimes I just feel like Michelle say sometimes I'll, I'll have them filter what I say. <laughs> but well, let me tell you something, and this is something people understand. There are principalities in this region that are that we will have to confront to be effective as a church. And, and they will come at us when we decide to come at after their agenda, which is getting people out of their hand of the enemy. Amen. And, and a lot of times people don't even know this, that Satan will actually let certain churches get big because they're no threat to his kingdom. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell you, the way I teach, the enemy is afraid of a church like us. Right. Amen. So he will fight us every tooth and nail. To try to see that his plan, the purposes of that God's plan for us won't be fulfilled. Right. So what am I saying? You, we got to toughen up. Right. We, we got to have some, uh, I don't know, some spiritual, you know, I don't know, not, not folding like a wet paper bag in the middle of a windstorm. Amen. Because I'm trying to tell you, when you're trying to go after the hand of the enemy, the devil will come, and he said he's subtle too. Sometimes it come in, in so many different ways, and ways that you know he ain't go. A lot of times you can deal with the devil when you see him come. Yeah. But a lot of times the reason why he gets the victory because you, he came in a such a way where you didn't see him coming, so he was able to get a foothold. I y'all follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to tell you that the enemy. For some, I just know that whatever we've been called to do, we've been called to do something great because our attacks as a church have been so great. And that's not by happenstance. Mm-hmm. Reason why I know that? Because I know a lot of pastors that are not living for God. Mm. Come on, come on. Girlfriends on the side. Come on. Mm. I mean, you wouldn't even know if they were saved if you knew their personal life. Come on. Mm. But yeah, they got big churches. Yeah. And then you got other churches that so so cooperate with the religious spirit, and we just flow with it. They have no words. Yeah, you go to church, you get your shout on, but the devil said, "Yeah, I no threat. Go on to that church." I'm gonna tell you. I'll give you. I give you an example of saying that. I'm move forward. I'm, and again, I'm trying to teach y'all some deep spiritual stuff, so y'all can get an understanding of. <laughs> Uh, what we have to do, I, I, I'm trying to give you some, some understanding here mm-hmm. so you know. So this one pastor, he was at a church. He, he had a storefront church uh, on, the, on the highway, on the side of the highway. And, and he was like, I'm in a great location. They said hundreds of cars pass by every day. And so what happened was the, he was asking, well, what was it? And so the Lord showed him. There was a, he opened up the spiritual eyes and the, and the demonic spirit had put a veil over the people's eyes. So they saw it as a, they thought it was a car dealership. When they drove by, they didn't know it was a church. Mm-hmm. And when God opened the spiritual eyes and he saw there was a veil, he spoke and broke that thing in the spirit. And then people started coming to the church the very next week. Mm-hmm. And you know what they said? They said all this time, we thought it was a car, a car dealership. We didn't know this was a church. The principality was blinding the minds of those people so they wouldn't come and get what they needed. So which means if they can change that perspective, don't you think that they can make sure that, oh, well, you can go to that church. That's fine. Because at the end of the day, when I want to attack you, you don't have the knowledge to come back to to basically take authority over me. Yeah, they're, they're a good shouting church, and they, and they have great services going on there. They got great children's ministry, great facilities. But when you're, when you're, when you're on the attack for the fight of your life, you don't have a clue what to do. You don't let them wrestle with the doctors say. Go to those churches. Don't shout me down because I'm teaching real good. Yeah. And the reason why I'm, I'm sharing these things because, understand, these are the type of warfare, and again, it comes in different ways, but I want you to realize you know, these are the type of things that can happen when you are now about to approach and really come after the hand of the enemy. Amen. So what am I saying? To in conclusion, let's walk in love. Let's forgive. Let's not offense rise up. That's how he, he uses he, he, And offense a lot of times happens through misunderstanding. You know what I mean by misunderstanding? 
I said one thing, but you heard it through another lens of what you thought I meant to say. And and then now the enemy has used that what you thought I may have said in your lens and how you may have heard something. Right. And then he takes that and creates strife in the house and divisions and stuff like that, different things. And then we can't be affected. Mm-hmm. You know? And so I'm just understanding those things and just recognizing that and I and I'm just gonna tell you that uh God has brought us too far to for us to, to back down now. I feel like you we, and 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 I believe sometimes these things are intentional where God leads me, to, you know, talk about these things. Like we're beginning, I believe, I mean, God, I know the world may have a different thing, but I believe that we are as a church, you know, we're we're coming out of the pandemic and then we're about to get ready to, you know, uh uh, uh move forward and go against the, you know, approach the enemy and begin to reach people for God. Mm-hmm. And so just in one last thing I'll share with outreach. You know, that Jesus said, or well, something my mother used to always say, he says, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Like Jesus, the Proverbs say, uh, 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 it says a hard answer, it says a slow answer, I forgot what it uh, turns away wrath. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a hard answer is gender strike. So in other words, now what you say is how you say that, right? So in other words, it says that in, in, in Romans 2, it says that the people who are already in the wrong already know, they already feel the conviction of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to go out there and say, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. They already know it. Because mm-hmm. their heart is already condemning them. Amen. Mm-hmm. So what am I saying is the Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls a man's heart to repentance. So meaning that our job is not really to go out and get people saved. That's the Lord's job. But our job is to lay hands. God's job is to heal. Our job is to go show kindness. It is God's job to work in their heart and, and then we'll be there to help lead them to Christ when they're ready. Are you following what I'm saying? Because you can't make somebody get saved. You can't. It's like you can't make somebody. I, for me, I feel like, you know, somebody say, uh, I'm going to make you be my friend. Uh, you're going you gonna to call me every day. You're going gonna to take, take me out to eat once a week. And if you don't do those things, you got hell to pay. Is that really a friend? No. Right. Because God never wanted it to be done under a system of control. So in other words, God wants us to show kindness in a way where it reflects his love and his nature to where they see it. And then once they catch it, then we can lead them. And that's what, you know, Mr. Ernie will always say, meaning that be a witness. In other words, let our light do the pulling, not so much us trying to, you know, go out there and say, you need to get saved. I have a problem saying. Amen. It's like Peter. What did Jesus do? Peter did. Jesus didn't say to Peter, all right, uh, you want me to help you with your, your uh, fish business and your money? You need to get saved first. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing until you. No, that's what he said, right? He said, go out again. He coming in frustrated, he had for nothing. He said, let's go out again. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he, helped, he showed kindness. And then Peter received the Lord from an act of kindness. Not everybody, but Peter saw it. Are you following what I'm saying? So that's that's just a wisdom piece. In other words, when we go out and we start strategizing, we're we're gonna have to strategize. So this is what we have to do it, just in the foundational thing, is go out and show different acts of kindness and then have a follow-up team to be ready for when people have questions. And that's it. Maybe we don't have to make it so different. You follow what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I I worked so hard to get John to be on time. <laughs> but I had to go to the prayer closet and say, Lord, save me from myself so I can talk to him right when I see him on Sunday. I'm going to start bringing my Jake's towel, my sweat towel. I'm going to start bringing my sweat towel just to make sure I wipe my, my brow when I don't see him coming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you know, you know he's supposed to be here at uh, 30 minutes, 830. But, you know, it's so rolling like, you know, 55, 5 <laughs> Man, I say, Lord. I say, woo. <laughs> Thank God for patience. <laughs> love is patient, love is kind. 
Oh, man. Long suffering. Are y'all follow say? Let me tell you something. Understand when when you we, we are a church family. Nobody's perfect, you know. But I'm gonna tell you. But I'll take one. But a lot of good things about John though. So I said if I can build him up that way, you know, I, he won't he won't leave next week, you know. I, you know, I, I've dealt with a lot of musicians over the years, and thankfully he has a good spirit about him. Yeah. yeah. Amen. You know, if, if the tardiness I have to deal with for a while to tell the, you know, the Lord help him with that, that's fine. <laughs> I'd rather take that over the other. I'm trying to tell you, dealing with a fair, like I remember my past, he said he'd rather deal with a drunk and give them coffee before they play drums than deal with a, 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 a religious Pharisee. Mm-hmm. Better people coming and stirring up strife for the church. Mm-hmm. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> But anyway, as we begin to, you know, start moving into some things, I'm, I'm really trying to lay the groundwork for where God wants us, want us to go. Amen. And so, uh, so I, I know I got my man. So, bitch, I'm good. You, uh, you got something? Okay, come on down. Yeah, bro. Then, then we, we'll be ties it off. And uh, that that particular beat that that flow that y'all were in, I'm not saying you have to go there. I'm just getting ready for this, but just to go do something. But in First Chronicles chapter 28, verse one, moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service. Of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jephthah, who should prophesy with harps and with palstries and with cymbals, and the number of the workmen according to their service was. And some things that Pastor was sharing, I heard the word of the Lord saying, very strong when y'all went there. So that's the one that y'all were in. Yes. Yeah. I heard the Lord say there was mold and even as pastor was saying about something how the enemy works because a lot of times you can't see mold in the home but there was mold that has crept in and even for you lovely people on this camera there's mold that crept in but even the Lord is raising up this house to be extreme exterminators are you hearing me? Hear the word of the Lord. To be extreme exterminators. Exterminators have to be trained to know how to go in to exterminate. And the mold that's been built up by the canker worm and the caterpillar that have hidden themselves in closets, that have hidden themselves in deception, that have hidden themselves in deceit, and it has not been seen. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I begin to expose that mold. I begin to expose that deceit. It shall only be the remnant that shall see it, because many don't seek me, says the Spirit of grace. But those that seek me with all of their heart, they're going to see it. They're going to see it even more. They're going to expose more. For the days come that I put my hands on things. The days come that I raise up ones that will see me put my hands on things and can run with those things that I place my hands upon. But even today, the Lord would say, extreme exterminators, train exterminators to remove the mold that's been hidden in dry places. Oh, so Father, we thank you. Now, I declare and I decree, I decree by your spirit that which you've spoken in this house, that which you've spoken that reaches out. I call that mold, those canker women, those caterpillars, I call them out. You have been exposed. You have been exterminated. You have been brought in a courtroom. And justice has been done. Get that thing flow with it. Don't get scared of it. Hit it. Because those instruments are prophesying. The Spirit of God is prophesying through you with it. With a little bit more authority. With a little bit more authority. With authority. And even all those late times with a little bit of authority. There you go. Shit, come on. 
Kingdom authority, where something moves in the spirit and where it begins to show up on earth. I mean, that, that's some great stuff right there. I don't know, I don't know about that, but I tell you. And I know people in the house, you know, I, most of y'all will understand what I'm saying, but you know, for those listening online, I don't know who I'm just saying that uh, when, when you flow in that, that kingdom flow, meaning, you know, things change, things shift, amen? Mm -hmm. And so, and that, that's ultimately what we're after. We're after where we can see destiny, we can see people's lives moving forward. Amen. So I'm just going to give you a couple of things uh, today. I only have one thing on my heart that God really uh, put on my heart to talk about. So I'm, I should be good on my time as far as getting us out between 10, 15, 10, 20. Y'all probably could look at more like 10, 20, but I'm just going to say throw 10, 15 out there. Actually, we got communion today, so I'm going to uh, shut it down at uh, 10, 15. So I'll, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to go like 20 minutes. I guess I've already, you know, halfway preached a little bit, so I guess, you know, but anyway, um, so let's go ahead and get some word in. Let's go over here to, um, and I just want to hit this, uh, what I was talking about a little bit this morning. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, there we go. Um, Mark chapter 5, verse 35. 
Now, Jesus in Mark chapter 4 been talking about the parables of the soul. So, so is the word, all that good stuff, right? The kingdom of the, the soul. So, and now we're talking about new structures, new levels. We're still in the same teaching, but I'm just hitting different rabbit trails in the, in the teaching. All right, so it says, verse 35, on the same day when the evening had come, verse 35, he says to them, let us cross over to the other side. So now Jesus began to instruct. In other words, he was a teacher. Now he's about to uh, display or illustrate what he was teaching. So, so now before you even enter into your fight or before you even go to anything, always prophesy, declare your end from the beginning. In other words, you basically begin to declare, I, I'm, I'm going to see good things in my life. In other words, you begin to make that declaration. So Jesus makes that, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had come, when they had left the multitude, they had took him along in a boat. And as he was, and the other little boats were with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat. So they was already filling, but he was astern asleep on the pillow. And when he awoke, they said to him, teacher, do you not care that we perish? And then he arose and rebuked the wind. And the sea and said, peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they fearfully said to one another, how can this be that even the wind and the uh, sea obey him? So we understand that Jesus asked them, why are you so afraid? In other words, what is he saying? Why did you let the storm get in you in the sense of why did you have more fear of what the storm said? But didn't I say we want to go to the other side? But what did they do? They magnified their problem over what God said. So what is fear? Agreeing with the enemy. So in other words, remember, so it's not your problem that, that, that God is, that, that Jesus was correcting them on. He let their problem prophesy their demise. You saw what you follow what saying? See, faith prophesies victory. Fear prophesies demise. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, when you're, when you're a person of faith, no, we're going to the other side. I don't care what the hurricane said. Jesus said we're going to the other side. Yeah. Fear says the hurricane is saying we're going to die out here. And that's what pretty much they said. Jesus said, let me get up from here before they kill us with their words. <laughs> How many of us have agreed with what the doctor said? There's nothing wrong with you get the diagnosis, but don't let them prophesy your destiny. They're not in charge of your destination. Yeah. God is. Yeah. Yeah. You may, you may have lost your job, but that don't mean you, you'll have to go without. You have to say, no, my God supplies all my needs. In other words, you, see, like that's what fear does. Fear will begin to say, take the facts that are around you and start prophesying what the devil is saying about your situation. And then when you begin to see that, even though you may have Bible knowledge, but what happened? You took the position of what the natural was saying over what God said. And he said, why you have no faith? He said, why did you let this problem this gets you into a place of agreeing with what, what the enemy said. In other words, didn't God say that I'm going to get you to the other side? Well, why am I agreeing with the problem? Amen. Why am I worried? Why am I stressed? Why am I getting crazy? Because I, I have let the enemy grab my mind. So in other words, they gave their mind over to the enemy in that moment. All right? So now... And that's one point I want you to, to see. And then Jesus said, peace be still. And that speaks to the authority. But Jesus had peace in him. So you can only talk to the thing that's already in you. And so let me say this. Just give you a head start on what we're going to be talking about for these next 15 minutes is this. That a lot of times people think that our enemy is on the outside. But your enemy is not on the outside. Your enemy is in your mind. So no, the enemy is how you think about it. So a lot of times people think that your your money is your problem. Money is not your problem. It's how you're thinking about it. What, what you've been through is not your problem. It's how you're thinking about it. Because if you ever notice, God said if you can get victory on the inside, you'll see the victory on the outside. But the problem is we're trying to get victory on the outside before we first get it on the inside. So until you get the victory on the inside, see a lot of times that's what we don't understand. Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord has... Uh, I come upon me so I can heal the brokenhearted, set captives free. What is that? That's all internal stuff. So in other words, God said that I can set you free in your thinking and in your heart. He said things will start showing up right on the outside. Why could Jesus talk to the storm? Because he already was free from the storm on the inside. Because Peter and, and the rest of the disciples were already bound by what the storm was saying. They couldn't talk to nothing. And a lot of times people are trying to talk to stuff, but they can't even get out of it on the outside because they're not free on the inside. Mm -hmm. I you follow what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. 
And so now I really believe we got to go through a paradigm shift and stop trying to only use principles to get our life moving in the right direction, which is nothing wrong with that. But if you're not taking the word of God to get your mind moving in the right direction, it's very little that the principles going to really work for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, and, and then there's another part I want, I want to touch on. Then it says verse five, I mean, chapter five, verse one. Then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes, where he had come out of the boat and immediately they met him out of the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit dwelling among the tombs could bind him not even the chains. But often he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart, and the shackles been broken, and no one could tame him. And then when he saw Jesus from afar, verse 6, he ran and worshipped him. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When you're bound, the one thing you can do is worship. Worship can do some things, can get you out of some stuff on the inside that nothing else can do. Amen. And then he says, um, Verse 7, he cried with loud voices, saying, What do I have to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. He asked him, What's your name? He answered, the Name is Legion, for we're many. And then he, then, he, then he told him about the demons go into to the swine. Oh, that's a whole other thing. But then I want you to uh, see something here. Um, verse 20, well, this is verse 19. Excuse me. It says, However, once he, could, you know, set them free. In the verse 19, however, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he com had compassion on you. And he departed and began to go to proclaim in the copulous and all that Jesus had done for him and all marvel. So I want you to I want you to see this. This guy was bound. And he could not fulfill his purpose until Jesus came to set him free. So he yes, he was in chains, but what happened? His soul was bound by the enemy. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So he had to basically Jesus came to break that now. And the copies, they say this, and when you study it out, it says like 10 cities, like thousands of people. So in other words, the reason why he had a legion of demons is because he was called to reach thousands of people. His his warfare was directly connected to his assignment. So like they say, like Mary Magdalene, she was only called to get out seven. She said, they, said, they said she had seven devils because her job was to tell the disciples he was risen. She still had devils, but her, her fight was consistent with her assignment. I have all of saying. So in other words, whatever fight you're going through and how intense it may be, it's all directly connected to your purpose and your destiny. So the devil just don't fight you just because. Apparently he gets wind of what you're called to do and he sees a level of attack based off of what you're called to do. I hear what I'm saying. But you notice how the enemy, the hand of the enemy was broken when he worshipped. That's why I'm a firm believer of praise and worship. Because there are some things that can be broken by the Spirit of God when you worship. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. I'm trying to tell you. I remember when my mother was in pain. She was taking the perfect It came to a point where her body could not respond to it. Pain was just dead. But once we got up to worship, mm. that pain broke. Well, we couldn't be done in the natural. Mm. God was able to do when you worship. Come on. Yeah. And so what I'm saying, there is something connected to getting your mind free from the hand of the enemy in your worship. Yes. Yeah. That's why we've been talking for the last month about sound. That everything follows the sound that it makes. Because if you can get the right sound, then it can break your mind out of the place it needs to be and start moving where God wants it to go. That's why I told you to check your sound. Why? Because I need my mind to move so God can work. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, and here's something that I did some deep study, and again, you can study out for yourself. In, in the book of Genesis, it's actually prophesied that Jesus was actually going to go there and just set this man free in a deep study. And so, a lot of times, you, know, now, you may not believe this, but it says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In other words, Satan is the author of storms and hurricanes and stuff. So here's the thing I want you to see. And this is crazy. Did you know that those devils knew Jesus was coming? 
that they actually tried to create a storm to flatten the boat so he would never get to the guy. They were that calculated. Because if it was God that did it, even though you know uh, insurance companies say it's an act of God. <laughs> right. But Jesus said, I only do to say the things I hear my father saying do. So in other words, if he was to rebuke the storm, he would be rebuking his father. So which means he was basically stopping the, the, the uh, assignment of the enemy so he can get to the guy so he can set him free. Come on. Amen. I don't know, get what I'm saying. So in other words, and, I'm, and, I, want and I want y'all to catch this. A lot of times, and this is something people don't even realize, you know that uh, most things that you're dealing with are generational enemies. That's right. Yep. Like especially when you like when you get married, you know a lot of times you think you're fighting their issues. No, you ain't just fighting their issues. You're fighting the assignments that the enemy has had in your family for years. Right, right. And you need to be under the right type of teaching and know how to break the hand of the enemy yes. that had an assignment Lord, over your life Lord. and over your future. Yes. Amen. So in other words, you just haven't been through three divorces just because you was a bad person. There had been an assignment in the family to make sure that that happened. That's right. That's right. Come on. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. That's it. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm talking. I'm going deep right now. Go on in. You know what? In other words, if, 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 your, if your mama was a drunk, your, your daddy was a drunk, and you was to know, no, there was something in the family. That did that, why? So you would never fulfill your purpose and plan. Because remember, God, how did God, what did God tell Abraham? He said, until all the families of the earth will be blessed, which means he's going to use the, the union of the marriage and the children to be able to push forth his agenda in the earth. So which means Satan says, I got to get in, into that family and try to disrupt their plan and purpose. So if I can just take over their mind and their thinking and get inside their family, they'll never see what God called them to do. But I come to tell you today by the power of the blood of Jesus. This is the last time the enemy has victory over us. We're going to be like Jesus going to the other side. And we're going to take authority over the enemy. Yeah. That's why we're going to see your victory in yeah. our family. Yeah. We're going to see the victory right. for our children. Yeah. We're going to see the victory in our finances. Why? Because Jesus got up on that cross and said, I'm yeah. going to break yeah. the generational curse yeah. of the enemy over our life that will hinder us for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. Come on, Pastor. That's what the enemy is trying to say. You have to realize the enemy is calculated. Mm -hmm. He sees things through. In other words, and his goal is if I can just keep you bound, then you can't move. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. And so God is saying now it's our time to know who we are and whose we are so we can move forward in what God called us to do. Because and that's the part that I don't think we always understand. We, a lot of times we just think we just, you know, Fighting, you know, psychology. No, no, no. Some things ain't just, you know, a mental issue or appeal. Right. right. Some things is there's a devil that has taken over your mind. That's right. That's right. And you need people that know how to say, in the name of Jesus, yeah. Lord. you get your hands off their mind yeah. so they can be all who I called them to be. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And it's called the authority of the believer. But we begin to operate like God called us to operate. So I want you to understand that the way God has planned purpose, the enemy has tried to assign. Now, this is what he does. He comes and says, so the way he knows that God has won the victory for us, he knows he has no right. But the thing that he does, if I can just hold your mind captive, you'll never do what God called you to do. Mm -hmm. He don't care how much you know, as long as he still has your mind. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So now, the point is, so here's the principle, and I shared this just a little bit this morning, that things don't change until you change how you look at it. Things don't change until you change how you look at it. So I, uh, one of the people I listen to, uh, Annette Cap, she talks about quantum faith, and she talks about how the ad, you know atoms and neutrons and atoms are in the, in the realm of all possibilities. 
Now, remember when Jesus was walking on the water, when Peter, Jesus and Peter were walking on the water? How is it something that is liquid can hold you as if it was solid? Catch this. And, and so now it says how when Peter, when he was uh, walking on the water, and as long as his focus was on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. Mm -hmm. But once he observed the winds and the waves, he began to sink. Now, again, remember, you don't begin to sink. <laughs> if you're getting, if you're getting, uh, you're taking a dive in the pool or something, you don't begin to sink. You get, you're a cannonball in that thing. I don't know if did, I, one time I did a belly flop. That belly flop hurt. It wasn't no beginning to just get in the water. You know, man, you know what I'm saying? My stomach was a little red and everything. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I done a little cannonball. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there was no, oh, he just slided in the, in the water real slow. Like, you know, he, he began to say, right? right? But in quantum, in quantum uh, physics that they say, physicists have said, that atoms are in, in neutrons are in the realm of possibilities. They're, they're always there, but they're in a dormant state, but they're there. They say, but what happens is they will begin to come to the shape and the form of the observer. Mm -hmm. That's right. So in other words, in other words, the things now, just look at the spiritual authority God gave us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. That the world begin to form according to how you looked at it. Come on. Come on. So while Peter was looking at something solid, yeah. he was able to walk and do the supernatural. Come on. Yep. But as long as he looked at something that had no stability, that's why his heart began to fail. Mm. I don't know what I'm saying. So if you want to get your mind out, you need to get your mouth and your words focused on what God said about the situation, not what the enemy said about the situation. That's right. That's right. Because if you want your mind, if you want God to see move, you need your mind to get there first. And so, and I really want to talk a little bit more about that, about how God needs our mind to move. So last, last point reference and, and land in this plane. Remember the, uh, I love my, one of my favorite texts I always preach from, which is Joshua and Caden in, in the 10 spies. They've been through the same experiences. They, they saw the same great God do some great things. But once they saw their problem, what happened? They, Joshua and Caleb said, I see a victory here. Mm -hmm. Everybody else said, I see a demise. They both were right. right. Why? Because the world responded to the other. Right. I have all I'm saying. Right. So, and now what happened? What did God tell Joshua? Why did he say this book of lost in that part of your mind? He said, if you can give me a sound, then and he said, now I can get your mind. He said, because until my until I can get your mind, I can't really do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you something. As long as you may, and this is where I want to make sure we get clear as a church. But one of the one of the reasons why we're frustrated as people. Personally, and maybe as a church, is this is because you can be doing the works of the ministry, but your life is not going to move as, as long as your mind is stuck. Right. Because your life is not going to go with what, how hard you work. Your life is going to go where your mind goes. Because even when Israel, they said, God said, well, y'all got to spend the next 40 years in the world. You know, they actually tried to form a small team and try to take the land. They got their butt beat. You know why? Because they tried to move in the natural with their actions before their mind got there. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm telling you is, is that I don't care if you can have the best strategies in the world, but nothing is going to happen to you. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is the state of being. You will arrive at the place of where your mind is. Lord, come on. So if you're long as your mind is stuck in your issue. You ain't, I don't care how much you know, you ain't going anywhere. Because you're not going no further than where your mind can take you. So here's the train of the enemy. And, and we have to get we'll get into this next week. That's why you have to understand that in God's job is if I can just get your mind out, then I can get you out. So in other words, so the enemy's job, if I can, in other words, I don't care how much God you know, how much stupid you know, but as long as I have your mind, you will always be able to be frustrated. 
Because you're doing and you know the right things, but your mind never moves. I y'all follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now God is saying, can I be your God? Where I can get your mind and move your mind where I want to take it. Because he said, you won't even see the power until your mind moves. And I, and I shared this last Bible study that we did. When, when you study the life of Abraham, it said when he became fully persuaded, then God moved. He did all the right things, but nothing moved until his mind moved. So now what is the thing that's strong enough to move your mind? It's called worship. Because worship is the only, remember, the only thing that God created our minds to be defenseless against the sound. Mm. So whatever sounds you hang around will be where your mind goes. That's why you can't hang around everybody always talking about yesterday. Right. Right. So that's where your mind will be. Come on. That's why you can't keep hanging around people that's talking doubt and unbelief because that's where your mind will be. Right. 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 I want to get around some people well, they are talking about tomorrow. Yes. Blessed is the man who walks yes. not in the council of the ungodly. <laughs> but I want to stay and walk with people that's talking about what God want to do, and where God want to take us, and that God got big plans for us. And I want to keep getting around people that's going to move my yes. mind from where I am to where I want to yes. go. Why? Because if I can get my mind where God want it to be, my life will eventually catch up to it. That's why I got to get my mind to the place where I see myself as a millionaire. Why? Because if God begin to direct my steps, to get me there, I got to get my mind to see myself healed. Then I'll start my body, start getting itself there. Yeah. Why? Because as a man thinker in his heart, so is he. I, my life will move. So the enemy say, if I can just keep your mind here, that's why you got to get your mind from away from people who are going to hold your mind in, in these other places. Lord. That's why I got to get around people yeah. that's talking victory, yeah. that's talking faith. Why? Because if I can get my mind there, that's what God told him. He said, you can beat your giant if you just get your mind on the idea of victory. Yes. Lord. Amen. He said, I don't care how big those walls are. He said, get around the sound. He said, this book is lost in the part of my He said, get around the sound that's going to move your mind to victory. Yes. Yes. Then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Yes. Yes. But a lot of times, what do we do? We go back home and we listen to, to the, uh, the enemy and listen to our problems and listen to this and listen to that, giving our mind over to the enemy. We wonder why, with all the information, things are not moving. Because now it is time for me to start getting my mind moving in the right direction. And so I'm going to talk about so we're moving. I'm really driving down this point. When we talk about seven, then we're going to start talking about you got to get your mind moving. And that's why I'm going to tell you that a lot of times that's what the enemy does. And he tries to find creative ways to say, we can come out. I'm trying to tell you, I can talk about our the best plans in the world, but as long as our mind is stuck in what we've been through, yeah. it's just great information, but we ain't going anywhere until we move our minds moving. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, there's so many relationships I've tried to help, but what happened? Their mind was so stuck in the hurt Broke. that they couldn't even see a vision of what their life could be. Yeah. Are y'all following what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. I was talking to uh, Miss Rick about this the other day. I know my time is up, but I want to share this with you real quick. I'm not just going to just throw it out there with food for thought and we'll dive on this later on. I was talking about how, you know, Jesus talks about forgiveness. Forgiveness is the antidote that unstucks your mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's proper English, but I hope you understand. It's already laughing at me. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. See, because what unforgiveness does, it keeps the. It, Jesus said, when you are operating on forgiveness, he has to turn you over to the torment. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, in other words, the reason why your mind is stuck because you have not chosen to forgive. Yeah. Mm. And you're being tormented by your past and tormented by your failures and tormented by your regrets because you have chosen to not forgive. Wow. 
That's why Jesus had to stand in there and say, forgive them for they know not what they do. Why? Because he said, I will not be stuck in what Judas did to me. I got to I gotta get up in three days and I will not let my mind get stuck in what I went through. So I got to let this go. Because my tomorrow is greater than what I've been through. And therefore, if it wasn't for Judas, I wouldn't be moving in my purpose anyway. So why should I stay mad at people helping me move my purpose anyway? Because God said, all things work together for my good. What can separate me from the love of God? Betrayal, hurt, backstabbing, this and that. He said, it will all work in my favor. So I will not let what God said, I will work into your plan to hold with me and for unforgiveness when the devil keeps my mind stuck. So I choose to let it go. So my mind can become unstuck. Because my tomorrow is much bigger than what you did to me. Man, I tell you, I felt something there. So that's why I'm trying to tell you. God said, no, that's why he said, you got to forgive your neighbor. How many times? No, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Your future is hanging on the balance of you forgiving. So if you want the enemy to have a license to keep your mind stuck, then harbor unforgiveness then. But that's why a lot of people go to church for years. I promise you. I promise you. The reason why you've been going to church for 10 years and nothing's happened, unforgiveness is there. That's why you're tormented by the same cycles. Because of unforgiveness. God working on something right here. That's why I love the song, Forgive Even When It Hurts. There's freedom, healing yes. when you let it go. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell you. That's why I'm, I mean, that's why I believe. That's why I have such great respect for Mr. Ernie. Mr. Ernie went through a, a huge betrayal, but he forgave mm-hmm. and God restored. Amen. Look what God told jo- Job when he forgave, God restored. Amen. 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 A lot of times, God can't restore. Because you have given the enemy a license to keep you stuck through your choice of unforgiveness. You don't know what they did to me. Well, that's you know what that is? That's a stronghold by where you're basically telling the enemy you have a right to keep me stuck. Right, right. That's why you don't see freedom. That's why you don't see healing. That's why you don't see restoration. Because I'm choosing to hold unforgiveness. That's why you have to forgive at all costs and let it go. You say, well, you know, they can get off. I'm going to tell you something. What Jesus did for you is 10 times greater than what they did to you. Amen. What Jesus did for you is 10 times greater than what they did to you. Amen. I hear what I'm saying. Yes. So I'm telling you. That and when you harbor unforgiveness, you know what you you know what you're saying. That means that when your mind is stuck, you're only limited to what the doctors can do for you, mm-hmm. only what your job can do for you, and only what your education and what your mind can do for you. Because right. mm-hmm. God can't help nobody who has shut their heart down. Yeah. Right. Because y'all, you don't understand. Forgiveness and unforgiveness is not a nice thing to do. It is a legal thing. It gives God legal right to restore. When you harbor unforgiveness, you you give God no legal right to come in and restore your situation. With the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it for good, but it only happens for those who forgive. So I'm trying to tell you today. I, and again, I'm not trying to make you convince again. I'm just telling you the truth. So I'm saying it is time to let it go. So you can get out of your cycles and get your mind unstuck. Yeah. And begin to now get your mind moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I'm trying to tell you, I don't care. And that's what I'm saying. Whatever we've been through at the church, you gotta let it go. Yeah. Come on. Our tomorrow's bigger than what God yes. what we've been through. Come on. Yes. Right. Come on. If there are people hurt you, you gotta let it go. Amen. Amen. Because you understand, Satan says, if I can just have this right to hold you here, you can't move forward based on your own decision. I hear what I'm saying. So what is the time to do? It is time to let it go. There's healing and freedom 
and forgive you. Say amen. amen. All right, well, amen. we're going to hit the pause button there. Hallelujah. Man, I have some good stuff. I mean, that, I had a little different direction I was going, but, you know, I ain't always going to hit this forgiveness thing. Right. Yes, let me go, we'll do this communion real quick. And I'm not trying to be irreverent about it, but we're going to, you know, move through it expeditiously here. And so that's sealed. Our, and, and again, forgiveness is a decision. That don't mean that my hurt is going to go away right away. Because sometimes, you know, the hurt takes time. But again, God can start doing the restoring when forgiveness is there. Right. So we're just going to take this word. We're going to do communion under this word. So, Father, we just come before you. Thank you for your word. We just thank you for your son, Jesus, being a representation of what forgiveness looks like. And we thank you because of the, the forgiveness that you gave to us and what Jesus did for us. We are now able to come to the throne room of grace and ask for mercy in time of need. Because of what the shed blood of Jesus did, which is an example of taking a penalty and paper for us, even though we didn't deserve it. And so, Father, we just thank you for, for forgiving us for our sins based on the blood of Jesus. And, Father, under the, the, the sound of communion today, we check our hearts today and we say, Lord, any, and if there's anything in my mind where I held something against somebody, I let it go. I set them free so you can do a restoration in my life, whether it be my finances, my mind, my relationships, whatever it may be. And so, Father, I just thank you that as I take this communion today, that I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet because Jesus' body was broken for me. If you believe it, let us all eat together. Thank you, Jesus. And we just thank you for the shed blood of Jesus. That because of your blood was shed, I, that was the penalty that you used, or the, the currency you used to wipe away all my sins. Where I can now become before you without any guilt, shame, or condemnation. And I just thank you for it that your blood has washed me clean, Father. I truly forgive and wash them clean of any wrong that they've done to me. And the Lord and I repent of anything in my mind that has held me back or any of those things that, that, uh, that keeps me captive. And I just worship you in this moment. Father, I say thank you and I just praise you for your goodness and your mercy. And I just celebrate your loving kindness towards me to where I can extend that loving kindness to others. And I just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Let us all drink together. And I just thank you. Give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought I'd try back with them and forgive me for this. But if those who don't know Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I say, then all you have to say is, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again. I make you the Lord of my life. If you pray that prayer and believe that prayer, go to our website at worldlifefc.org, click on our prayer button, put in your email address and your name, say, I got saved today, and we can get you some information. Amen? And so, well, God bless you all. We'll see you next Sunday. Have a blessed week, and we're going to have a great time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right, have a great week. God bless you.